Kokanoom, I thank you so much for listening to us here this evening. Thank you so much. We come sharing the loving message of our one and only Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, died a terrible death so that we can live. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. First Timothy 3.16 tells us, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. John 1.1 1, 1 confirms that Jesus Christ, who is the Word, is God manifest in the flesh. God came into this world so that He could pay for all of our sins for all time so that we could live. We don't have to die the spiritual death, the second death of the soul. All we have to do is believe on Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And in that very moment, He will reach down in loving, tender mercy. Remember, this is called the good news, ladies and gentlemen. The gospel is the good news and glad tidings. It's the truth that the world is not going to give you. But our loving and merciful God will reach down in that moment that we confess that He is our Lord and Savior. And we believe with our hearts that God hath raised Him from the dead. In that very moment, folks, that faith in Jesus Christ will seal our redemption forevermore. If we truly believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that He died on the cross to pay for all of our sins for all time, if we believe that He died on the cross and rose again on the third day, then we, if we confess that with our mouths, and we believe in our heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, in that very moment, folks, we will be saved. Our redemption will be sealed. The Bible tells us, unless we've been born again, John 3.3, 3, Look, look it up in your own Bibles at home, folks. John 3.3 3 tells us we must be born again or we will in no wise see the kingdom of God. That means it's not enough just to be a Christian on a census form. That means we can't just tick the box and say, oh yes, I'm a Christian, when the census comes around. In order to be saved through the death of Jesus Christ, we must be born again. Jesus tells us in his own words, he was speaking to a Pharisee named Nicodemus. He said, you must be born again, born not only of water, but of the Spirit. That means, folks, that if we consider ourselves nominal Christians, but we have not truly been born again, if we have not truly come to Christ in faith for our salvation, John 3.18 tells us we are condemned in our sins already already means right now already means present moment folks if we are not in christ right now we are dead in our sins right now the bible tells us we are condemned already we will in no wise see the kingdom of heaven we can in no wise see the kingdom of heaven if we have not been truly born again in the spirit not the flesh that goes to heaven, it's the Spirit. We must be born in the Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. And we do that by believing on Jesus Christ. Open your Bibles. Read the book of John, the fourth book of the New Testament. It's the best, easiest, simplest entry point into the Gospel message. Read the book of John, the third book, Matthew, Mark, sorry, the fourth book, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The fourth book of the New Testament, the Gospel according to John. In it, in chapter 3, verse 16, we are told, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, that means every one of us, ladies and gentlemen, whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, before you mock and scoff about how none of us shall perish, God, Jesus, is not talking about this physical death. It is appointed unto men to die once. 
we shall die. This flesh shall die. But the spirit, the spiritual death, the second death, we don't need to die. That second death. We are here, ladies and gentlemen, not to save you from the first death. It is appointed unto all men to die. And then the judgment is what the Bible says. After we die, we have to go before God's throne. His judgment is going to be brought to bear upon us. If we have been living in our sins, if we do not believe in Jesus Christ, if we have not wrapped ourselves in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, then we are condemned already, John 3.18 tells us, as does the rest of the scripture. It's not a common message, folks. It's not the message you wanted to hear. But this is called the good news for a reason. And although we are dead in our sins right now, all we have to do to be saved is to call upon Jesus Christ and to believe in our heart that He is the Son of God. Say, Dear Lord, I know that I am a sinner. I am a great sinner. Please save me right now from my sin. And in that moment, if you're believing in your heart that He is the Son of God, He will reach down with His tender touch and save you forevermore. Your redemption will be sealed. You will be saved from eternal perdition that this world is going to endure for an eternity. We are out here, folks, because we're not living in average times. We are living in a wicked day and age. These are very clearly the last days. These are the last hours of the last days. If we abide in God's true word, we can see that for ourselves. You don't have to take my word for it. The world is becoming more wicked and more debauched with each and every day. Wickedness is beginning to reign supreme. The world has been turned upside down and inside out. I feel so bad for these young people who have been brought up in this wicked world that thinks it's so wicked that it thinks it's progressing. This wicked world is so wicked that it thinks it's progressing. It's progressing right into the toilet. And Jesus Christ is going to come and condemn this world. The Bible is crystal clear. Read the Gospel accounts. They all speak of the same event. Read the Old Testament. The Old Testament speaks forever about this same point. The New Testament, the Old Testament are pointing to one, the one true truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. Yoga is not going to save us. Hinduism is not going to save us. False Christianity is not going to save us. Judaism is not going to save us. Buddhism is not going to save us. Islam is not going to save us. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, says Jesus Christ. The Word of God, the, the blameless Lamb, the final sacrifice. Jesus Christ came to show us the way of the way to walk in truth. We don't have to suffer in this lifetime. We're all hurting inside. We're like the walking wounded. We have endured hurt after hurt in this world. Some of us seek solace in a bottle. Some of us smoke skunk weed. Others take antidepressant, antidepressant medication. Some of us pop psychedelics. Some of us are intrigued by this new world of micro-psychedelics, where you can take just enough to optimize your performance in the marketplace. These are wicked, ladies and gentlemen. That hole that we are all feeling, unless we are in Christ, is never going to go away. We can stuff ourselves to death with tasty fiddles. We can drink ourselves to death. We can smoke ourselves to death. We can vape ourselves to death. If we don't fill that hole that is crying out for Jesus Christ, then we will always feel that hole. We will never be complete. And our, our condemnation is drawing more and more to its inevitable outcome, which is eternal perdition in a literal fiery hell. Revelation 21, 8, chapter 21, verse 8 tells us that all unbelievers, all liars, and it goes on to talk about 
other terrible folk, murderers and adulterers, sorcerers. But notice, folk, you don't have to be a murderer or a sorcerer to be eternally condemned. The Bible tells us in Revelation 21.8 that all unbelievers and all liars will have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Now that's not a popular message in the 21st century, is it, folks? That's not a popular message. We want to go about our day-to-day -day business not having having our thoughts dampened with this message. But all those sounds like terrible news is actually good news. Because if we don't have to pay that terrible price, if we don't have to pay that terrible price of eternal condemnation, all we have to do is believe on Jesus Christ that He died on the cross to pay for all of our sins for all time. The moment we confess that He is the Lord, the moment that we believe in our heart that God hath raised Him up on the third day, we are in that moment saved. We don't have to go to some wicked Anglican church and sit on the pew for a hundred years. We don't have to go to the wicked Catholic church and go to go before a Catholic priest and confess our sins so that they can tally all of those sins and use it against us. These churches in our faith, ladies and gentlemen, do not exist to share the true gospel with you. They exist to share lies, to steer you away from the truth that is in God's Word. The Catholic Church, the Anglican Church, the Methodist Church, the Presbyterian Church, I could go on and on. These churches do not exist to share the truth of God's Word with you. The Jehovah's Witnesses do not exist to share the Word of God with you. It's only in the Word of God that you will find the truth. Pick up the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. Don't take my word for it. I can be lying through my teeth. I can be like all the politicians who lie to us every day. I can be like the news media that lies to us every day. I can be like the scientists, falsely so-called, who tell us that this world came into existence literally from a big bang. They expect us to believe that all of this miraculous life came into existence through literally no thing, nothing. It's impossible. It is the most logically absurd proposition that any philosopher ever put on the table. It is absurd. Only an idiot, only somebody who has been brainwashed from the cradle would ever believe such an absurdity. But there we are, folks. It's another indication that we're living in the last days, in the last hour of the last days. This world is increasingly becoming debauched. We have turned from God's ways. God wanted this world to be righteous. God wanted us to live in a good world where we follow His laws. But we all fail. We all know the story of Adam and Eve. Through Adam, through Eve partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, sin came into this world, and by sin, death entered in. That means that we are all condemned to die. But that was unnecessary. God intended our us to live in a righteous world. He wanted us to live in a righteous world. He wants us to come to Him in righteousness today. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. If we die right now, we're dying in the sins of our sins. Read John chapter 3, verse 18. We are condemned already if we are not in Christ. Now, to be in Christ doesn't mean to have your butt in a pew on a Sunday morning. To be in Christ doesn't mean to go to the confessional each week. To be in Christ doesn't mean to sprinkle your baby with water. To be in Christ means to believe in truth that God was manifest in the flesh in the form of Jesus Christ. We need to believe on the Son of God for our salvation. There is no other way, ladies and gentlemen. John 14 says, And I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father 
but by me, Jesus Christ. There is no other way. The world has been lying to us from birth. It's not a question of religion, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a question of which denomination you're in. They're all lying to us. We need to get in God's Word. I had a Catholic woman walk up to me in the last location that we were preaching in this afternoon, and she wanted to know what denomination I was in. I am not from a denomination. I was born and raised in the Anglican Church. I was, I was confirmed in the Anglican Church as a 12-year-old boy, but that means absolutely nothing. All it means is that I endured a bunch of lies from the Anglican Church, just like the Catholic Church. They are giving us anything but the truth. They are wicked antichrist institutions that are ultimately trying to bring as many people into eternal perdition as they can muster alongside themselves. It is the work of Satan, the work of the devil himself to draw as many people into hell alongside him. Do you realize, folks, that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, what his last words were? Does anybody, can anybody answer that question for me? What would Jesus Christ dying last words? Anybody? Fuck off you, you little son. His final dying words were, It is finished. Through Christianity, the only one through your religion is a finished religion, ladies and gentlemen. All the other false religions, including false Christianity, seek a work-based salvation. You must be a good person. But the Bible tells us there is none righteous, no one born. Romans 3.10. Romans 3.23 tells us we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. Isaiah, the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 64, verse 6 says, We are all as an unclean thing. All of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Now, folks, it doesn't take a, a genius to realize that if the God of the Bible is telling us that we all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, if the God of the Bible is telling us, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. If the God of the Bible is telling us, for all come short of the glory of God, it doesn't take a genius to realize we are never going to be good enough. The Bible tells us nobody will be justified by the law. We are only justified or saved by grace, by God's grace through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, that means every single one of us, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If we, if we believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, we will be saved. In that very moment, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him will have everlasting life. Everlasting life is life without end. We're all going to die the physical death. Yes, we all. It is appointed unto all men to die once, but we don't have to die the second death. We don't have to die the spiritual death. Revelation 21.8 says, If we are not in Christ, we are unbelievers. If we are dying in our sins, then we are condemned to eternal perdition in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. This is the good news for a reason, folks, because it doesn't have to be bad news. The bad news is that we are condemned in our sins already. But hallelujah, through the grace of God, He offered us a way out through His Son. His Son willingly gave Himself on the cross, died a terrible death to pay for all of the sins for all mankind. And all that God asks, all that God asks is that we just believe on His Son, that we believe in our hearts, and that we confess Jesus with our mouths. 
that very moment, our redemption will be sealed. We will be saved. We will not have to suffer eternal condemnation. But it requires that we humble ourselves. It requires that we quit listening, lending our ears and our minds to the wicked lies of this world. It requires that we begin to abide in God's word and begin to live according to his ways. Now we can live a really, what we think is a good life, but if we do not believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we can be a wonderful person, but it's not going to matter on Judgment Day. That is indeed the bad news. John 3.18 tells us if we do not believe, we are condemned in our sins already. Not when we die. It tells us that we're condemned in our sins right now, today. We're already condemned, folks, but we don't have to be condemned. That's why Jesus gave us the good news. That's why Jesus Christ is called the Good Shepherd. Read John chapter 10. Read that. It's a wonderful chapter. John chapter 10. Read about the Good Shepherd and how he gave his life so that we can live and live more abundantly, to live eternally. We don't have to suffer the eternal torment even of this world. We're all hurting, folks. We hurt inside. Some of us drink ourselves to death. We self-medicate with marijuana. We take antidepressant medication. But those holes, those terrible holes that we all feel, that hurt that we feel, is not going to go away except we give ourselves to Jesus Christ. We call upon Him and say, Dear Lord, save me right now. I know that I am a sinner, but please save me. I believe, Jesus, that You died on the cross. I believe that You thereby paid for all of my sins for all time. And not just my own sins, but the sins of the whole world. Do you understand that, folks? God was manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 tells us, indisputably, John chapter 1, verse 1, tells us, indisputably, God was manifest in the flesh. He came to pay for all of our sins so that we do not have to suffer eternal torment in hell. That's why Catherine and I are here today, folks. That's why we're sharing the gospel. Because God loves you. God would that none should perish, but they would all come to repentance. We're calling everyone, we're calling Wokenham to repentance. I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again in Wokenham. And I apologize to all my YouTube viewers who are like, oh, he's not going to pull that out of his hat again. Listen, if I were here saying, I've got the best ice cream in all the southeast of England. If I said, I've got the best ice cream in all the southeast of England. I'm going to give everybody a free ice cream cone. Triple, triple scoop. Everybody would be lined up. Nobody would pass us by. But here God is offering free eternal life. It's a free gift of God. All we have to do is receive it. When somebody gives you a, a birthday gift, do you have to work for it? Or does it do people just give it to you? You just receive it, right? You're like, thank you very much. I've always wanted this. Thank you so much for that gift. You have to receive the gift. That's all that's required. Just like any gift, we cannot work for it. We cannot work for a gift. If we work for a gift, by definition, it's not a gift, right folks? If we have to work for a gift, it is no longer a gift. It is rather recompense for what we have done. But God is offering a free gift. And when a free gift comes, we don't have to work for it. We have to accept it. We just simply say, Dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for coming into this world. Thank you for paying for all of my sins for all time. Dear Lord, please save me right now. I believe in you as the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins and everyone else's sins. 
Dear Lord, please save me right now. In that very instant, he will reach down with his tender touch and he will seal your redemption. All we have to do is believe on Jesus Christ. But it requires that we be humble. People in the 21st century don't want to humble themselves. We don't want to be called to account. We prefer to be living in sin. We prefer to be living in rejection of God, our Creator. We pretend that He's not there. We believe, we believe in foolishness like the Big Bang Theory. We, we believe in foolishness like evolution. We believe in foolishness like Freudian psychology. These are all false sciences, ladies and gentlemen. John 3.16, God so loved the world. This is a loving message. This is a loving message. God would that none should perish, but that all would come to repentance. This is the good news, ladies and gentlemen. The good news that this world has been keeping from you. The good news that the media has been keeping from you. This is the good news that the wicked films of our day and age are keeping from you. These are the truths that the politicians are keeping from you. They do not want you to know the truth of God's Word in the Bible. And the beautiful thing about God's truth is that you don't have to believe me. Salvation has always been by faith, never by the law. Even Abraham, e even Abraham and all the godly men and women of the Old Testament were not saved by the law. They were saved by faith. Read Hebrews chapter 11, the faith chapter. Check out everything I'm saying because I might be like everybody else in the world, just filling your head with lies. Don't believe me. Don't put your confidence in man. Rather, trust the Lord. It is better to trust the Lord than to have confidence in man. Do not trust me, folks. Read the Bible for yourself. Check it out. You realize that we are saved not by keeping the law. We are saved through faith, by God's grace. God is giving us a free gift. He's saying, here, people, I want you all to be saved. Here's a free gift. My son, Jesus Christ, already paid for this gift through a terrible death on the cross. There's nothing you can do to earn this gift. You do not deserve this gift, but God is so gracious and loving and merciful that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross so that we do not have to pay that terrible debt that we all owe. We're all sinners, folks. Romans 3.10 tells us, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. I am a sinner. I rejected God for three decades of my life. I was an ardent atheist, rejected God completely. I was a sinner, an adulterer, a liar. But all we have to do is commit one sin, folks. One sin, and we are less than perfect in God's eyes. We have all sinned, haven't we, folks? I don't have to convince. 
convince anybody of that. We're all sinners. And if we've told just one little white line, we are sinners. And in God's eyes, we're thereby less than perfect. And in His righteous kingdom that is to follow, He is not going to let any sin, any evil, thank God, He's not going to let any sin or evil enter into the kingdom of God. There is only one way that we can be without sin, and that is not through our own righteousness. We're never going to be righteous enough. We're never going to be good enough. If I was depending right now on my good works of sharing the gospel, I would die in my sins. The only way that we can be righteous is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It is only through His blood, His death on the cross, that we can live and to accept God's free gift. And it's so easy. It's so easy that people don't believe it. People have hardened their hearts in the 21st century. Oh man, it's been to the moon. That's another lie. Everything we've been told about science is a lie. Everything that the media talks to us about is a lie. I'm really sorry to say this, but most of the stuff we get in our school system is a lie. The powers that be do not wish us well, ladies and gentlemen. They want to abuse our minds. The powers that be want to abuse the minds of even our innocent children. They fill their minds with lies and with wickedness through wicked movies, wicked books, wicked TV shows, wicked music. Our young people are, above, are learning this wickedness from their own parents. The adults around which our children are being raised are wicked. There's wickedness everywhere in 2019. The world has been turned upside down and inside out. The world has been turned upside down and inside out. And if you've been in this world for any length of time, you know that that's true. Your heart of hearts is telling you that that is true. When the school system starts giving our kids this idea that a boy can be a boy one day and then choose to be a girl the next day, you know we're living in the last day. When the school system says that a girl can be a girl one day and a boy the next day, you know that your school teachers in the school system and the powers that be do not wish you well. They are trying to turn your heart into wickedness. Fortunately, our young people actually have some rising up, saying we're not going to abide by these lies. This is pure wickedness. If you notice all the forms over the past dozen, fifteen years, it always used to say, what is your sex, male or female? All of a sudden it's like, one day this world completely changed. And all those forms it used to say, decades, hundreds of years, are you male or female, suddenly became, what is your gender? I just created a Facebook profile a few days ago because I was going to be running a Christian community on Facebook. So I had tried to not do, have anything to do with Facebook for a long time. And I said, okay, what the world intends as evil God can do good things, great things through these platforms. And so I signed up for a Facebook profile. And do you know one of the questions was, what is my gender? What is my preferred pronoun of choice? And what I actually did was I chose um, a custom field. I didn't want to gender, male or female, because my gender is, I am a physical male, my wife is a physical female. Our genders are inherent within our sex. 
So when I answered that question, I chose the custom field, and I wrote in there, my sex is male, not my gender. Okay, but somewhere along the line, about 12 or 15 years ago, all the forms around the world overnight switched from saying, what is your sex, male or female? That's binary. It's one or the other. It's, it's black and white. You're either born a male or a female. This gender agenda is pure wickedness. We're living in the last days, folks. When we send our kids that are telling wicked lies, that are lying to our children day in and day out. You know that we're living in a wicked world. When good people try to actually stand up, when good people try to stand up and actually bring some semblance of sanity back into the equation, we are ridiculed. We have lawsuits against us. We're threatened with arrest. We're threatened with lawsuits. Just because some of us still acknowledge that truth is truth and a lie is a lie. We have been lied to by everybody, the politicians. They lie to us to get us into one war after another. It's non-stop, perpetual war. One lie after another. The media lies to us. The media constantly banging on the drumbeat for war. These wicked, unjust wars in the Middle East have nothing to do with anything. Nothing to do with what happened on 9-11. I was just a few hundred miles from ground zero when it happened. These wicked wars that we have been fighting in the Middle East have nothing to do with terrorism. They have everything to do with power in a grotesque, unjust power grab. But our media has been telling us the story of these lies. The politicians tell us these lies, but we only get the truth in the Bible. The simple truth, all that we really need to know is that Jesus Christ died for our sins. All we have to do is say, Dear Lord, in the privacy of our own home, in the privacy of our own home, we don't have to go to a church. We can just say, Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I am a sinner, dear Lord. I know that you died on the cross to pay for my sins. And I'm asking, dear Lord, please give me the free gift of salvation. Please save me right now, dear Lord, so that I can live with you and the Father for an eternity in a, in a place that is righteous, in a place that is truly good, not like this wicked world. All we have to do is to cry out in faith and believe in our hearts that He is the Son of God and He will save us. We don't have to persevere in this world living with holes shot through us. People are hurting in the 21st century. Our young people are hurting in the 21st century. Adults are hurting in the 21st century. We try to anesthetize ourselves with alcohol and with drugs and with television and with video games and with books and with films. We try to entertain ourselves to death so that we don't have to feel the pain of this world. But we don't have to feel that pain, folks. If we cry out to Jesus Christ and then we ask Him in the privacy of our own homes to save us, he will fill those holes. He will fill those holes in our soul so that we can actually enjoy even this life. We can rejoice in the joy of knowing that we can be with Him for an eternity. We can rejoice in the fact that this world, this, this life is but a vapor. It seems so real to us. This life seems seems so tangible, and yet the Bible tells us this life is like a vapor. It will pass so quickly, and we only have this lifetime to choose our eternal destination. We're either going to choose life through Jesus Christ, or we're going to choose death and condemnation and hell. 
and I implore everybody who is listening to me. I implore everybody who is listening to me. Please choose life. Please choose life through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Do not choose death. We're living in a death cult. We're living in a day and age where Harry Potter reigns supreme. The wickedness of even our children's novels is terrible. The final book of the Bible, Revelation, tells us that all sorcerers will die, have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Sorcery is witchcraft. We don't have to die in our sins, folks. Please, I implore you, pick up your Bible. If you have one at home, if you don't, download one to your smartphone. Begin to read God's Word. Begin to realize the truth of God's Word that nobody else is giving to us. Harry Potter is a creation of wicked powers that be. It's got nothing to do with entertainment. Harry Potter is a mind control program to bring our young people into sorcery and witchcraft. It is wicked. It is not innocent, good fun. Harry Potter, like much of this world, is just wicked. We can laugh about it. We can scoff. We can mock. But we are either saved by the blood of the Lamb or we are condemned already. John 3.16 gives us the good news for God so loved the world, loved the world, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the good news in a nutshell. It is the news that the 21st century does not want to hear because we're living in a wicked day and age, a God-rejecting day and age. We know those of us who abide in God's true word know that these are the last days. Everything that was prophesied about these times is coming to pass. This world is growing darker with each passing day, literally growing darker. I can remember evenings when the sun was still a glow, afternoons where the sun was a glow, mornings where the sun was a glow. Now we live in this wicked world where even the light, even the sunshine is all wrong. Even the sunshine is a weird platinum white. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to talk about our blue skies having disappeared. Trust me, these are not blue skies. We used to inhabit a world where the skies were truly blue. We used to live in a world where the sun was actually golden and yellow, just like school children used to draw the sun. It wasn't like this painful white orb of platinum white phase. This world has fallen, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody who's got eyes to see and ears to hear knows this irrefutably. But the trouble is, when we reject God, we have no spiritual discernment. When we have no spiritual discernment, we are like uh, flypaper for lies. We'll believe any old um, ridiculous lie. We'll believe that the entire world, that all this intelligence of our very own bodies, the intelligence of the flowers and the grass and all these incredible animals, we believe that all this literally came from no thing called the Big Bang. We become foolish when we lean into our own understanding. We become foolish. It is only when we begin to fear God that wisdom, true wisdom, can begin to reside in our hearts. Otherwise, we are subject to all the lies of this world. We're like lie paper, attracting lie after lie. The Bible tells us that it's, uh, we believe all, deceival, all deceivableness of unrighteousness. We become so full of unrighteousness that we'll believe anything. We'll believe the most extraordinarily stupid lies. 
because of our unrighteousness. Our minds have become reprobate, rejected of God because we rejected God. When we reject God over and over again, God gives us over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are unseemly. This is what happens when we try to lean onto our own understanding. When we try to live according to what man tells us is true, the world goes, falls off the deep end. It's going right into the toilet. When we lean on to our own foolishness, not surprisingly, bad things happen to the world. The world becomes more and more wicked with every passing day. God tells us that, wis that fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That means if we are devoid of fear of God, it means we are foolish. It is only when we begin to fear God that we realize what terrible fate this world has in store, that our souls have in store. When we begin to fear God, that's when a spark of light can come and we can begin to actually understand true wisdom. If we are rejecting God, if we mock and scoff, we certainly are not fearing Him. Therefore, that precludes any wisdom. I have two master's degrees in philosophy and classics. I studied the best of what man had to offer. Western, European civilization, philosophy. The philosophy and religion of the East, India, China, and Japan. I thought I was an, a well-educated man, but I had my head full of lies, and my head was filled with foolishness. Man's ideas about wisdom, Socrates and Plato and Aristotle, the Buddha, Confucius, Lao Tzu, these guys did not have wisdom. They had foolishness. They were not wise, they were fools. Socrates was a fool, Aristotle was a fool, Plato was a fool, Lao Tzu was a fool, Confucius was a fool. We can only have wisdom if we fear God and we realize what our situation is. We should all be fearing God's wrath right now we are living in the last days. This world is about to be condemned. We are here to give you the good news. The bad news is that the world is condemned. The good news is you don't have to be condemned yourself. If you believe on Jesus Christ as the Son of God, if you confess Him as your Lord and Savior, and you believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's not a question. The Anglican Church members have no gospel assurance. I used to be one of them. I was confirmed in the Church of England, the Anglican Church in the U.S. We have no gospel assurance. My 81-year-old mother is still an Anglican Church member. She has no gospel assurance. She thinks that she has to be a good enough person. But the Bible tells us we're never going to be good enough. We're never going to measure up. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Romans 3.10. Romans 3.23. We all fall short of the glory of God. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. We are all as an unclean thing. All of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, is what the Bible says. We're never going to measure up. We're never going to be good enough. And if we are depending on our own righteousness, then we are condemned in our sins already. There's only one way, there's one truth, there's one life, and it's Jesus Christ Himself. It's not a religion, it's salvation. We must believe on Jesus Christ as the Son of God is the only way that we can be saved from our sins. Thank you so much, Wokingham. I appreciate everyone listening to me. I appreciate everybody being polite. I really, really appreciate those young women who were listening to the gospel. I'm so glad we came out this evening. 
if for no other reason, so that those four young girls could hear the gospel on their way home from school. If that's the only thing that happens today, then I'm happy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I implore you folks, put all of your faith, all of your trust in Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can save us. Those wounds that we have spent a lifetime feeling inside can go away. We can be made complete. Those holes that allow in evil spirits can be cast out. Those holes can be closed up in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that a great many people have heard this gospel message in Wokenham today. I pray that you will confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today before it is too late. I pray in Jesus Christ's mighty name that everybody begins to pick up their Bible and to read a bit of the Bible every day. Begin to abide in God's true word so that you can see the truth that the world is keeping from you. The stinking lying politicians and the media and the university and the scientists are lying to you about virtually everything. We think that we have been well educated, but we've been well indoctrinated, very well indoctrinated. Thank you so much, Wokingham. I really appreciate your listening. May God bless you all, and I hope that you have a wonderful evening this evening, and God bless.